Hey folks, Matt from writeoftheimage.com. We got a question here from Jeffrey uh, on the email. Jeff writes in, he says, Hey Matt, I love your videos. Keep up the awesome work. Not sure if you've covered this already, but I'm looking to buy a camera that I can use for video. And he's got brackets and YouTube vlogging. But I also would like something that can hang for normal photography as well. I was looking into the ADD since it's so highly coveted, but how relevant is 4K these days? As you and so many others mentioned, the ADD AF is amazing, but does that outweigh the lack of 4K? Would love to hear your thoughts. Thanks, Jeff. Well, thanks for your question, Jeff. Um, and it's an interesting question. As if you're a regular viewer, you know I'm a big proponent of 4K. I didn't used to be, but I am now. It gives you options uh, in editing, in post. Um, a 4K video ac uh, exported to 1080 is always going to look better than a video that was shot at 1080, especially on a camera like the ADD and the codex at levels it's at. Um, is it more relevant than the dual pixel AF? Well, only you can decide that. If you want to vlog... If you want to do some YouTube video where you're a one-man show, no crew, and you really need that camera to be able to follow you smoothly and accurately, it's probably more important to have the dual pixel AF in the ADD or in the SL2. That's an option I would look at if I was you as the SL2 um, than it is to have 4K. Canon's newest offering, the M50, it has 4K, but they don't give us dual pixel AF in 4K mode, which is kind of a letdown. So... Um, there are definitely situations where I would still rather have dual pixel AF and no 4K. So if you're vlogging, that's one of them. If you're doing other YouTube videos where you're working as a one-man crew and you want to be able to move around on set and have the camera follow you accurately, the, the ADD um, or the SL2 would be the way to go. Um, the reason I bring up the SL2 is because I just reviewed it. Love that little camera. It's basically everything the ADD has in a smaller, lighter package. Very similar autofocus system, especially if when you're shooting photography, you're mostly a center point recompose guy. You won't notice the difference. Um, and it's got the dual pixel AF in a smaller, lighter package, which is actually better for vlogging because you're holding it. So I would look at that. It's a better price. And I really loved that camera. It's a darling of a little camera. It's something everybody should look at. I think it's a sleeper. I think it's selling well, but I think most people don't realize how much is packed into that camera at that price point. So have a, a look at that. I hope that answers your question. I do think 4K is really, really relevant. Um, it allows you to shoot 4K and then heavily crop in and make it look like you've got different camera angles, like maybe you have a B camera rolling. It allows you to make adjustments in post with the extra information, almost like RAW. Not the same, but similar idea. Um, if you haven't framed something well in video and then you can reframe it in post, export at 1080, and, and you wouldn't have had that option with a 1080 file. The ability to extract images from a 4K file uh, is huge. You basically got an 8 meg photo when you extract an image out of a, out of a 4K video. You're not going to get that from 1080. So there are some distinct advantages, but in situations like vlogging and other things, there's a maybe the dual pixel AF outweighs that. So hopefully that explains or, you know, lays it out on why you might still want dual pixel AF over 4K or why you might want 4K over that and, and what is more important. I'm going to throw it back to our viewers, though. What do you guys think? Do you agree with me that there are situations where a, a good follow focus like dual pixel AF would supersede 1080? Or, I mean, I should say 4K and 1080 is enough. Um, or do you think 4K now is, is, is totally necessary? It's tough because it's hard to get 4K in Canon without going all the way to the 5D Mark IV, and then even then it's a bit of a crippled file. So um, what do you guys have to say? Let me know in the comments below. Let's help out Jeff. Always great to hear your feedback. Thanks for your question, Jeff. Stay tuned. We'll be back soon here at artoftheimage.com.